an impregnable stronghold, the place where the treasures of the modern information world are kept. Thousands of these complexes are deployed on all the continents. They are nodes of the global network. Their location is known to very few people, but every one of us has access to the information stored within them. Massively multiplayer online games are currently developing at an unprecedented rate. Wargaming projects have fans all around the globe, and their number is ever-growing. We have 100 million registered users, or active users, that are playing at least once, uh, once a week. We have um, maybe 80 or 100,000 that are playing on one uh, certain cluster. And if several clusters belong to a region, we have up to one million players that are playing at the same time in the region. These numbers give you an idea of the scale and quality of equipment necessary to handle the enormous amount of game data, including that from the wargaming projects. For example, if you created a fascinating multiplayer game and installed a server in your apartment, as the number of players grows, you will have to increase its capacity, improve its architecture and connection channels. And to make it all operate flawlessly, you will need an uninterrupted power supply, a cooling system and reliable security. Sooner or later, you'll come up with the idea of a data center, a specialized building to install all the necessary server equipment. One of the best European data centers is located in Luxembourg, the capital of a small European country. A huge army of Wargaming's European players is connected to the servers installed there. Welcome to the data center. We exist to provide cooling and power to our clients so that they can continuously provide services to their clients. The Luxembourg Data Center is located at a considerable depth of 22 meters, equal to a seven-story building. Its total area is 15,000 square meters. The building is kept out of the public eye and has strict security. It ensures continuous round-the-clock work for hundreds of servers and consumes enough electric power for a small city. The power is provided from two totally separate sides of the country, and that gives us the whole data center, a side A and a side B. All the electrical and cooling services provided on side A are mirrored on side B, and they are completely independent. And this is side B, which as you can see, is a direct mirror image of side A so that if you lost one power supply, one cooling system, the, the other side would simply power up harder, make more energy, provide more energy automatically. We achieve that by having everything completely duplicated. In case the data center completely loses the external power supply, the complex has an emergency system. It consists of uninterruptible power supply devices and generators. Batteries only need to keep the data center powered for 16 seconds until the generators kick in and they can work as long as there is enough fuel. This is the diesel tank room. We have two 50,000 liter tanks of diesel which will run the data center for five and a half days at full load. We also have contracts in Luxembourg, Belgium, Germany and France to have fuel delivered to the data center in under four hours. We are third in the queue after the military, hospitals and then the data center.
Several floors of servers working round the clock produce a very large amount of heat. For example, it would be enough to provide heating to a student campus. To keep the equipment from overheating, you need a good cooling system, and basic air conditioning won't be enough here. A temperature of around 24, 25, 26, depending on what the client wants in that room. Different equipment requires different temperatures, and we can control it all from here. We do that using chilled water and pumps, all computer controlled, which then push chilled water around through into the cooler units in each room to take the heat away from the data center. And sometimes you might go past buildings and see plumes of steam. That's the vapor coming off the cooling towers, taking the energy away into the atmosphere. However, all this cutting-edge technology and equipment will just be a huge waste of money if the data center doesn't have a reliable connection to the outside world. Without a constant high-speed internet connection, the very idea of online multiplayer is impossible. We cannot put the servers to Australia when we are playing in Europe. That is the reason why the servers are in Europe. And we cannot choose an internet provider uh, that is sending the packets uh, between London and Paris via New York. So we must choose one that is very good connected. And that is the reason why we are selecting uh, the biggest ISPs in the world that are best connected to avoid such a problem. There aren't many data centers similar to the facility in Luxembourg. It has been assigned the Tier 4 category, which means that its maximum unavailability time is 26 minutes and 30 seconds a year. But even this has never happened. The data center in Luxembourg, where we are now, was unavailable for only 13 seconds during its whole operation period. And that's not bad at all. Every time a player clicks the battle button, a colossal machine starts working and creating a unique in-game reality. Every minute, people from different countries connect to servers rented by Wargaming to face other players in battle and win, to have fun playing and communicating. This is the reason why Wargaming deploys its servers in the most reliable data centers, outfitted with state-of-the-art equipment. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 52 weeks a year. This plant never stops. It runs forever, and that's our job.